Today I will talk about mountaineering shoes with you. I will go a bit more into detail with the mountaineering shoes. Hello, my name is Harald Fichtinger and I'm a professional mountain guide. Mountaineering shoes are, or mountaineering itself is quite a widespread term which can mean that you can climb up to 8,000 meter peak, you can do some waterfall climbing, you can do some via ferrata, or you can do some technical climbing in the Alps on lower or on medium high altitude. This will afford different kinds of shoes and today I decided to go a bit more into detail with a summer mountaineering shoe. I would like to introduce you the main features of these kind of shoes. The stiffness is on the one hand one of the most important things of a mountaineering shoe and on the other hand one of the most discussed points of a mountaineering shoe because some like to have a stiffer sole, some like to have a softer sole and it depends a lot on the activity you are planning to do. Imagine doing an ice climb with a very soft shoe. You will immediately find out that it's very exhausting for you to climb. So therefore, you need a super stiff shoe where the crampons fit perfectly. Imagine walking on a glacier for six, seven hours to reach a climb somewhere on a very remote place. Then you would like to have a bit a softer shoe to make the walking a bit easier, but still stiff enough to do the climb uh, which waits for you at the end of this valley. In kind of stiffnesses, we can talk about two different things. The first thing is the stiffness in this direction. That means the torsion stability of the shoe. This is very important if you walk on wet grass, if you walk on snow, so that it gives you some protection and some um, uh, help walking along an ice field or along a snow field. This should be quite stiff and it doesn't matter and it doesn't interfere with your walking anyway. The other stiffness is in this direction and there we have different kind of stiffnesses. As I said before, the ice climbing shoe is very rigid and almost like a steel plate that you can step with the crampons in the ice and you definitely stand there where you want to stand. If your aim is going more and more to a rock climbing uh, part, for example, with approaching via glacier, you will choose for a bit softer shoe, but still stiff enough that you can step on easy ledges or on small ledges, and you will see if the shoe is too soft, then it's a bit more exhausting. If the shoe is stiff enough, then you can step on a small ledge and you will stand there and definitely feel where you are standing on. The sole depends on the kind of shoe, if it's a high altitude shoe, you don't need a climbing zone. If it's ice climbing shoe, you don't need a climbing zone here because uh, you have your crampons. But for summer mountaineering shoe, a climbing zone here could be very important so that you have a good friction on your first part while you're standing on your ledges. The protection features of your shoe depend quite a lot on the activities you are planning to do. For example, an ice climbing shoe needs a bit of more protection because sometimes you touch yourself with the crampons and then you don't want to be the shoe damaged after one or two ice climbing trips. For a high altitude shoe where you are just walking on snow, uh, the insulation is more important than the protection. For a summer mountaineering shoe, it's always the decision between lightness and durability. The lighter a shoe is, normally the less protected is the shoe and the heavier a shoe is, the more protected is the shoe. And this is the way how to find out what you want to do. For our summer mountaineering shoe, for example, we decided to make a rubber protection around or above the sole. So this protects you a little bit against rock scratches and ice scratches when you're walking through loose rocks or on glaciers. This protects the upper layer from being damaged. Mountaineering shoes or the mountaineering boots definitely have to fit crampons. There are several kinds of crampon systems which are existing. There are semi-automatic crampons. That means that you need a basket on the front of the shoe and a lever on the back side of the shoe. These are, in the meantime, the most common multi-use crampons. For ice climbing on the very rigid soles, sometimes, also normally, you use full automatic crampons. And on softer shoes, sometimes you use a basket in the front and a basket on the back. But if you decide for buying a mountaineering shoe, then you should at least have a look that there is the option for using semi-automatic crampons 
because they give you a bit more stability than the normal baskets on the front and on the back side. The best crampon doesn't work on a shoe if the shoe is too soft. So if you decide for a shoe like this, look, have a look on the stiffness of the shoe if the shoe is stiff enough for the kind of crampons you are using. Waterproofness and insulation. Of course, and I think it's obvious that a mountaineering shoe has to be waterproof. There are different uh, kind of brands existing. We are using uh, mostly the Gore-Tex system. This keeps you dry and keeps you breathable so that you don't sweat too much in your shoe. The next part is the insulation. And the insulation depends a lot on the kind of activities you want to do. If your activities are a bit more in winter or on high altitude, of course, then you have to decide for a shoe which is more insulated. If you are uh, the type of summer mountaineer or three season mountaineer, then it's better to take a shoe which is not so much insulated because that means that you don't sweat so much and you don't get wet so much from the inside. Kind of a tip at the end, you can use gaiters to increase the waterproofness and to increase the insulation. Yeah, I hope this information helped you a lot to take your decisions, or at least a little bit, to take your decisions in choosing your right mountaineering shoe. If you want to know more, just stay with us on our channel. Ciao.